Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing what I think is the most beautiful, amazing nail set I have ever made in my life. Like literally, I can't believe I was almost not going to film this. That's why I had already started, as you guys can see. I was almost not going to film it. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just film it just because it might come out really good. I don't know. Um, it is a freestyle, so I'm going ahead and creating a dripped honey heart. So we're going to be making a Winnie the Pooh nail set, nail freestyle, um, in case you guys didn't see from the title. I'm starting off with uh, two coats of number 149, which is light pink, I believe, from Margism on Amazon. And then I'm going in with this color called Dipped in Honey from Madame Glam. It is the perfect honey color. It is like a super uh, jelly kind of like... Yeah, just like honey color, but I wanted to add a little more dimension So I went in with a little bit of that brown gel polish that I just showed right there from nail reserve I just mixed in a little bit of it to make it a little bit darker But I mean like a little bit like a tiny little dot of the brown um, Into the dipped in honey and created this little bit of a little bit of a darker honey color um, Just because I wanted it to add to dimen dimension so I don't have to add so so many layers But I do want the honey to be kind of 3d so that it looks like it's actually dripping off the nail You know what I mean? So I went ahead and created these two hearts on the ring figures on both hands so um, Both hands are going to be different which is what I love about Freestyles. I like making both hands different, especially when I'm painting characters. So this is going to be a Winnie the Pooh and Piglet nail set. So I'm going in with the Dipped in Honey color on its own and created more, creating more dimension by going around the heart and making it look like it's kind of dripping thicker in certain places and thinner in certain places. I hope that makes sense. Um, but it just adds almost like a little bit of shading, I guess you could say. So I really love the way that looked. I went ahead and added that. And then I'm doing the same thing to the other hand and the brush I'm using is one that I got from Amazon Sorry if you guys hear that ringing. That's my washer I just finished washing But um, I am just going ahead and using this brush This brush is absolutely amazing and it made me realize how much I love it after I'm finished making this nail set After I finished it, I honestly couldn't believe like with my like I couldn't believe that I made this set with my own two hands I am a huge Winnie the Pooh Winnie the Pooh fan um, I love Disney. I'm just like obsessed with it and Winnie the Pooh is just super cute um, I really love it and the fact that I made this so perfectly I almost cried because of the fact that I had to ship it away Like I'm not kidding. I wanted to keep it so bad and just make another nail set But I was like no like I can't do that I already finished it and I could always make it again if I absolutely want to but like I just I have like a fear that I can't create the same thing like twice like as perfect so I'm like I was like super scared of that like I would if I want to make this for myself and then I can't but anyway now I'm taking this color called spicy Sahara and I'm going to be mixing in just a little bit of white um this white gel is from Melody Susie I believe and I get it on Amazon I'm just mixing in a little bit of it I needed this color for um some little bees that I wanted to do so if you guys saw I went ahead and took some uh black liner gel from nails by dev it is just the baddest black liner gel and i went ahead and created those little lines that little bees make when they're kind of like moving in cartoons so um i did that and i'm so sorry you guys i got a little bit out of frame here because i didn't realize how far down my my little art dish was but i just created a little bee by drawing a little dot and then drawing two little black lines on it um it doesn't it, it i was like it doesn't need to be so perfect it just needs to you know be able you just need to be able to tell that it's a b and i decided to do two little bees so um i ended up doing another one right next to it or like on the other side and here's a better view i wasn't out of frame um so i'm just doing the two little lines the little stinger and then little tiny, um, what are these called? Wings. I'm like, what are those called? Um, but yeah, so little wings. Um, I just did them super light, kind of messy. It doesn't need to be perfect. You could totally tell they're bees. And now I'm grabbing my top coat and I'm going to be top coating the whole nail because it is finished. I also did a few extra little lines of those little bee lines right there on the bottom of the heart as well. Kind of outlining the heart in that just so that it wasn't so simple. I really loved the way it looks. And then I'm putting that into cure. So I'm going ahead and top coating the other one. I was working on uh, both of them at the same time for this nail so i went ahead and just did that top coating it all up and the top coat i'm using for this for this nail is the beetles top coat um it's super glossy works perfect for anything but for my characters i like to use a different one which you guys will see later but um now i'm going to be grabbing some of this thick 
kind of like jelly. I get I think I got this from I don't remember what the name of the website is, but I will put it in the description box. Um it is like a thick 5-in-1 gel that you can use and I'm going to be using this to add some um a, a little bit more of like a 3D element to the nail. It is a non non-wipe so it doesn't have a sticky layer, which I love. Um and I mixed a tiny bit of that dipped in honey color into it. And then I'm going to be outlining um, everything, like the whole entire heart, after it was already top coated and cured. Because this is just going to, like I said, it's going to add a little bit more of a 3D honey look to the heart. Rather than it just looking like I added too much gel and it was bumpy. I wanted it to specifically look 3D. So yeah, that's what I went ahead and did there. Now for the pointer finger, I'm grabbing Dipped in Honey again and I'm going to be applying, I don't remember exactly how many coats, you guys will see what I do, but um, I like to actually make the accent nails, or are they called the accent nails? No. I don't know what they're called, but like the nails that don't have the main characters on them first, because then, because I already know what I'm going to be painting for the character, like I have my inspo already picked out for the character, so I already know know what I'm doing for that. If anything, it's just harder for me to decide what to do for the other nails. So like the pinky, the the thumb, the ring finger, the pointer finger. I know for sure that I'm painting the characters on the middle fingers because I have the most space. Um, but I didn't know what to do with the other nails. So I like to get those first out of the way so that I could kind of just like help. It helps me like pull the whole set together. So um, I decided to go in with this really beautiful gold glitter. This is from Nails by Dev. Um... I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but again, it'll be in the description box. And um, I'm going to be kind of layering this on to make a really beautiful glitter nail. So I'm doing uh, a thick coat of this. So I did, did the dipped in honey that I'm doing this glitter and then I'm going to cure. I cured, I cure in between each layer, by the way. I know I get a lot of questions on that, um, but yeah, I always cure in between each layer no matter what. So I'm going ahead and applying that and then kind of like smoothing it out because sometimes there will be glitter and different areas and I try to make it as even as possible then I'm going to be grabbing a little bit I was like gonna see if I could layer this with a little bit of orange so I wanted it to look more honey like um so I grabbed a little bit of troll doll I believe that's what it's called um it is an orange jelly from nails by dev I just put a tiny little dot on the nail and then went back in with dipped in honey and went over that because dipped in honey is almost a little bit too yellow and the glitter that I used was also a little bit too yellow, almost like a green yellow. And I really wanted it to be way more warm toned. So I went in with a little bit of the Troll Doll, just a tiny dot, and then went in with Dipped on Honey on the whole nail. I didn't cure Troll Doll, by the way. Um, I didn't cure that. I just mixed them together. Um, I don't worry about it mixing on my brush. I don't worry about that too much. But um, yeah, so I really wanted it to be warm, more warm. I wanted it to basically look exactly like the Honey looks on the ring finger if that makes sense but I still wanted it to look sparkly so doing this layering technique was definitely a really good move I love the way it turned out um you guys know I love to mix and love to layer my colors I can't wait to have my own gel brand one day because I'm gonna create the most amazing colors that you won't have to mix you know what I mean um but now I'm grabbing my favorite baby pink I believe this one is called I'm gonna go look up the name because I always forget what it's called and I use it literally all the time. I just talked about it in my last video. Um, but it's from Nail Reserve. It is the most perfect baby pink ever. It is like my go-to baby pink no matter what. And it is called Floating. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, perfect baby pink. And then I'm going in with this color called Another Glass. It is the most perfect baby blue. Um, as you can see, these gels are one coat coverage. Like you literally don't need more than one coat, but you could apply more than one coat if you want to. Um, for my customers, I try to give them the best quality, so I always make sure to do two coats. But um, these colors are so incredible that you don't even have to. And I'm doing that on the thumb and the pinky because I am adding, I'm making sure the thumb and the pinky are not so, so detailed. I really want the three middle nails to be the main focus of the set. So I'm just going ahead and going, I'm going to be um, creating like these really pretty cloud bumblebee nails 
for those ones or bumblebee did nail designs so um the next thing i'm going to be painting is the winnie the pooh and i'm really nervous about that honestly so i'm going in with that color mixture that i made for the bumblebees the spicy sahara with a tiny bit of white and this is the my perfect winnie the, winnie the pooh color um I am just going ahead and sketching out the silhouette of what his head looks like. And I did use a reference photo from Pinterest. Um, I will put the reference photo at the very end of the video in case any of you guys want a reference. In case you guys want to recreate the set exactly. Um, but his head is kind of tilted a little bit out of, of an angle. Um, it's like a little tilted. I don't know how to explain it so perfectly you guys. Because when I'm making these characters I honestly just wing it. Like I don't have a set plan. I just look at the picture and I'm like okay I'm going to do this and this. But I sketched out where his both of his ears are going to be, as even the one that's going to be hidden underneath this gel. I still sketch it out to kind of get an idea of where it's going to go. And I just did it in the same color. Then once I'm really happy with the placement of his head and I feel like I have enough room for the rest of the body or whatever else I want to paint, then I go ahead and fill it in. So I don't fill it in until I'm 100% happy with the placement. And this was just one of those really lucky days where I got the head placement perfect on the first time. This doesn't happen every single time you guys like I still make mistakes very often and like proportions and placement is the hardest thing to learn when you're trying to draw characters trust me I struggled a lot with that but the really cute thing about this little character is that he's drawing he is holding a like heart pillow um so it's super cute because you can tell it's very squishy and it's so cute so I'm going ahead and sketching out where the heart is going to go again I mean I am looking at the reference photo but the photo is kind of a little bit pixelated so it was kind of a little bit hard to just see it super perfectly and I'm just going ahead and sketching out the part where his arm will also go um but thankfully I only have to draw one of his arms so it's not going to be too difficult and I'm just going ahead and filling that in and the color that I used for the heart is I believe um Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't think of it off the top of my head again. But it is from Nail Reserve, of course. You guys know I use them all the time. But it is from Nail Reserve, and it is this hot pink kind of color. And I mixed it with a little bit of white because I didn't want it to be super, super bright. I wanted definitely wanted this to have a really beautiful spring time look. Um, so I'm filling in the heart. And then, by the way, I did also already cure the yellow that I did for his whole head. And then now once I'm happy with the heart, I go ahead and cure that as well. Then for the red part of his little shirt, I'm going to be using Goddess from No Reserve. Um, and this is like the perfect red. It looks very dark on camera, but it doesn't look like that in person. Um, it is like a beautiful, true cherry red color. Honestly, looking back, I wish I would have used a little bit of a brighter red. Um, but it still looks really cute. And I'm kind of also, again, sketching out where his shirt is going to be. And the thing about this is he's kind of like cuddling himself into the pillow. So his neck isn't showing so much. I know he's a little chub so he doesn't have a big neck showing. But it's so cute that he's like hugging the pillow. So I just went ahead and made sure that I really am trying to like grasp. Or not grasp. How do I? How do I say that word? Like I really I'm really just trying to make sure that I showcase what he's trying to what he's doing. Or like holding the pillow you know what I mean? Because I know it could be kind of difficult to try to tell and how, how it could be like difficult to try to get um your in your drawing as perfect as it is in a picture that's made with like a computer like a cartoon you know what I mean that's what I was trying to say sorry you guys sometimes I just can't think of what I'm trying to say and I don't know how to get the words out but now I'm doing his arm so I'm filling it in, filling it in with the same color yellow and I'm basically Doing the color block technique that's what I do with all my characters it is the easiest way that I learned to do characters is just going in with the colors first and then doing your line work after and now I'm going in with triple fudge liner gel from nails by dev I bought her whole entire chocolate liner gel collection and I love them so far so I'm going in and just drawing his outline so I noticed that in the reference photo his outline is not super it's not like black so I made sure to use the triple fudge because it is like a, a really dark brown so it's perfect for what I'm trying to do and I am trying to keep my lines super nice and thin like that was the key with this character because my reference photo was had super super thin lines I was like kind of nervous about it but I'm so glad that it came out the way it did and I really am proud of myself with this character um 
I think this is like the most beautiful line work and character art I've ever done honestly and I'm making sure to add all the care all the details into the pillow as well like the creasing where you could see where like he's hugging it and it creases right there those little details really do matter a lot and this liner brush is just making it so much easier for me to get these perfectly thin lines because if I would have used a thicker brush I can't like I don't know why but I just can't use a thicker brush I know a lot of people can and they just know how to maneuver it but I can't like it's really hard um so this is a brush I got on Amazon that I just customized to make even thinner and yeah so I'm going ahead and tracing out all the lines where his head is at his shirt and the heart pillow and then um, the line work is like the what I would say is like the hardest part of any character of course because it's just super difficult but when you have a really nice thin brush and you're a beginner it helps a lot so don't stress too much about it I notice that when I stress the most is when my characters don't come out 100% perfect and when I completely just wing it and just say okay let's just do this is when my characters come out perfect so as you can see right here I made a little bit of a mistake so I just grab a tiny bit of acetone and a little round brush and I clean it up and it's all good as new um, and then yeah I'm just kind of fixing my lines here making sure they're still staying pretty thin and as you can see sometimes when you use too much acetone it'll spread your lines out so make sure that your brush barely has any acetone on it if you're gonna use acetone to clean up same thing with alcohol though make sure your brush barely has anything on it um, and then I'm going ahead and drawing where the other ear is going to be and now I'm going to be doing his face. This is like another one of the hardest parts is getting the proportions of his face right. But it really helped that his eyes were closed. So I just did this really cute little squinting uh, eye. And then I'm going ahead and doing his little smile. And I was really trying to pay attention to where the proportions were as far as his mouth. How far his mouth was from his eyes. How far it was from his nose. Everything like that. And his little nose, like I said, he's tilting a little bit sideways, so his little nose is a little bit sideways as well. And then um, he does have a bridge on his nose because he has a snout. That's a snout, right? Bears have a snout. Um, I'm like, I don't know, but um, now I'm doing the other part of his eye that's showing just a little bit through the other side of his face. And I was going to leave him like this. I felt like he already looked really cute, but I just absolutely had to add the shading. I feel like the shading is what makes it. So I wasn't going to shade because I feel like I'm not super pro like professional or advanced in shading yet. Like that's the next thing I'm going to start working on once I get my characters perfectly like proportions. I'm going to start on shading. So the fact that I shaded with this character makes me so so proud of myself. I grabbed a little bit of this yellow jelly color from Nails by Dev and I mixed it with a little bit of milky white. And I made this beautiful shading color that I used for him. So... Um, I'm just made sure that I made sure that there was no more black on my brush by the way I made sure to clean it in, be, in between everything um, and I'm shading around his mouth on the bridge of his forehead and then around his ears this is very important because the shading honestly makes all the difference like I can't believe I wasn't I wasn't about to add it it is so cute with the shading like it really brings the character together and shading makes all the difference um, so I love mixing if I need to shade I love mixing colors with a little bit of milky white because if I would have used the yellow jelly on its own it would have been way too saturated and mixing it with a little bit of milky white gives it a little more of a pastel shaded look so that it's not so in your face and now I'm grabbing a hot pink jelly from Nails by Dev and I'm going ahead and just outlining with this also I did mix it with a tiny bit of milky white um, and I'm going to be shading the heart so and anywhere that there's creasing is where I'm shading it so around his hands underneath these creases right here uh, just like how natural shadows would occur would occur like if you squish a pillow just like that so yeah I'm doing that here and oh my gosh it's coming together so nicely it honestly looks so freaking adorable I am obsessed and I'm not worrying about the very bottom of the nail too much at all because I do always file my nails at the end. If you guys are new to my channel, I file the bottoms of my nails because I really like to keep a nice crisp shape. And I feel like if I go back in with top coat after filing, then it just doesn't look the same. It looks off. 
Um, and something that I have always, always, always loved to draw my entire life are trees. I can draw a beautiful tree just off the top of my head. I don't need any inspo photo whatsoever. So I went ahead and decided to draw him underneath a little tree because he does live in the 100 acre woods, right? I'm like, right? Does he? I think he does. But um, I decided to go in with this beautiful brown. It's like a tan. Again, I didn't want it to be so saturated. I wanted to keep the pastel spring time vibe colors going. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of dimension with the triple fudge liner gel, but I barely have any on my brush. And I'm not curing the colors. I'm blending everything, kind of like making them blend while I'm painting, if that makes sense, with the two different tones of brown. Um, this is, this is going to make it look more natural instead of my lines being super harsh. So I'm going ahead and creating kind of like what a uh, tree bark would look like, random lines all over the branches. And I'm going to be covering it with little leaves anyway, so the branches aren't going to show too, too much. But I'm grabbing this color called Lucky Bamboo from Nail Reserve. And this is like a really beautiful green. Again, I'm mixing that with just a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, getting this really toned down muted green. And I'm going to be applying little dots of that all over the nail or all over the tree and just creating random little dots makes it look like the perfect bunch, like a perfect bunch of leaves. So I am just obsessed. And if I want any areas a little bit darker, I just went in with the, to mix a little bit more brown and um, added more, dim more dimension to create more leaves that look a little bit darker. And um, I am obsessed with how the little tree looks on top. Like, I really believe that the tree brought it all together because I didn't want to add more bees again on top of Winnie the Pooh. I wanted to make sure I added something different. And adding this little tree was definitely chef's kiss perfect i am obsessed like i love it and now i'm going in with my nails by dev shiny top coat and that is the top coat i like to use for my characters i'm going ahead and top coating him top coating the nail and then i'm going to make sure it's all cured and it is absolutely amazing you guys oh my gosh like again just looking back at this footage it makes me just realize like how what you guys always tell me because you always always tell me like don't downplay yourself you're super good at drawing and you're professional or whatever but I do like now I believe what you guys are saying because looking back at this set right here I can't believe I made this set because I was really on I was really on it this day you guys like I was drawing my lines perfectly whereas usually I struggle maybe it's just that my my hands weren't as shaky this day or something but at least I know that I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? But now I'm going to be um, going to the next thing. So I'm going to be painting little clouds. And you can get perfectly natural looking clouds by just getting a little round brush, some white gel polish, and just placing, kind of like patting on a cloud-like shape. And it's going to make it look super, super natural. And it makes it look so cute. So... This is my easiest way to do clouds. All I can explain is that it's white gel polish. You want to make sure you're using an opaque white though, not a watery white. And then go ahead and add two layers. So once you have your first layer, add another layer of white again. I did do the background this really baby powder blue. So you can't see the clouds too well. So I do end up adding dimension. And by adding dimension, you can grab a little bit of any color you want. Literally, it could be any color. But um, I prefer using like purples or almost like a gray tone. Um, adding a little bit of gray and then going back in with those same motions on the bottom of the clouds like the tapping will add dimension to your clouds and make them look like they're shaded. So I hope that makes sense but um, you're just going to go in and add some shading like that. As you can see it has a little bit of gray in the clouds there and that's because I added those little tapping motions of a little bit of a very very light gray color. Um, you could even do it with a little bit of a blue, a little bit of a purple. Here you could see it way better. So I'm just adding a little dimension here um, and you could be totally random with it. The more imperfect, the better because when you have them super perfect, they don't look natural and I want them to look as natural as possible. Um, I think someone complimented my clouds when I posted this out on Instagram and it makes me so happy because I'm like excited to show you guys how to do it because it's super easy. Um, all you need is a round brush. Literally, that's all you need. So as you can see, this is the same round brush I was using to clean up my mistakes earlier when I messed up on Winnie the Pooh's ear. So yeah, any round brush will work. It doesn't even matter what it is. And then you can go back in with white, go back in with the gray, go back in with white, go back in with the gray until you feel like you have a beautiful 
set of dimension on your clouds and that's just going to really bring it all together and then I wanted to add little bees so I wanted this to give the effect of like you laying on the grass on a really pretty spring day and there's little bee bumblebees like swarming around while you're looking up at the clouds like that was my vibe for this for these nails the thumb and the pinky I was like that's my vibe that's my vision of what I'm thinking of and I feel like I totally gave off the perfect uh little cartoon sky type of vibe so I'm going in with the bumblebees I think I did three per nail and then I'm going to be drawing the little the little movement lines or whatever they're called that the bumblebees make and then also drawing on their little stripes and their wings of course and this is just bringing the set all together I really wanted this set to be like super spring and just really really cute and honestly I am obsessed with it like like I said I was so sad the fact that I had to ship these away like that's the thing that kind of like hurts your heart is like when you try super super hard on something and then you have to like ship it away I get so sad about that but this set surprisingly didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to take I think it took me about two hours and a half which I know may seem like a long time but I made another set and it took me like four hours or five hours which is insane but yeah so that wasn't too bad considering it could have been way longer because I usually take a long time on my character sets I try to give it my all like I really want to try my best even though I'm not making four or five hours worth of money for this set I don't care I will just you know I don't care about the price I just want to give it my all because Gen drawing and painting is gen something I genuinely love to do so when I get to draw and paint characters which is re very rare because nobody ever orders that um it is like something I really cherish and I really want to you know take my time doing and give it my all so yeah I know that was kind of random but you could see here for the little wings I needed a little bit more of um precision so I went in with a shorter brush and this is the nine millimeter brush by nails by dev i'm just using this brush for the bumblebees so that i can get a little bit more of like it was hard to draw the wings with the super long long brush so i think the other brush i was using is either a 12 is either a 12 or 15 millimeter and going in with the nine millimeter for certain things is definitely the way to go especially if you're having trouble with certain little circles or things like that um maybe a shorter brush would be easier so yeah once i had the bumblebees exactly how i wanted them and i'm drawing the little lines that I was talking to you guys about I don't know what these lines are called but once I'm completely done then I'm of course I'm gonna go in and top coat but I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that gave me your recommendations I was I mentioned to you guys that I'm always getting sick and I'm still sick right now which is crazy like how is that possible but um I feel a little way better than I felt the last time that I told you guys I was sick um so thankfully i'm getting better and thank you so much to all of you guys that gave me your recommendations for vitamins or things i should do um and telling me your guys' stories some of you guys messaged me on instagram as well so i it is very appreciated like i said you guys are literally like my friends like i like asking you guys for advice and asking you guys things i should do um so yeah thank you for that and I'm just so excited you guys could finally see how I did this Winnie the Pooh set because I posted on my Instagram but I have yet I had yet to post it on YouTube so I'm like super excited that I get to do it but right here I'm just top coating and then the next nail we're going to do after I'm done top coating all of these bumblebee nails is going to be piglet and my piglet is one of the ones I'm also very proud of uh, my Winnie the Pooh Winnie the Pooh and my piglet came out so perfect as far as like the line work and everything like I'm really proud of this set in general um so yeah I can't wait to show you guys how I did one uh piglet So I had already went in with the pink on the middle finger and I totally didn't think that through because piglet is also pink um, I think the reason why was because I was originally going to do Tigger and then I felt like Piglet was going to go better. So I went ahead and added a little bit of a milky white color on top, just one layer, and then cured it because I want um, Piglet to stand out more. So then I went ahead and mixed together the Piglet's perfect color, like the perfect Piglet color that I was going to need. 
And you guys, when I went in to start painting Piglet and color blocking, it is it was the color that is identical to the background. Like it, you couldn't even tell the difference. It was completely the same. So I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna scrap that. And I'm just gonna do an outline technique where I don't color block and I just outline her. Um, or is, is Piglet a girl or a boy, you guys? I totally don't know. Like I'm a fan of Winnie, Winnie the Pooh because it's super cute. Um, but I've actually never seen like the movies, which I'm totally gonna go watch them after. But um, I don't know. I think he's a boy, right? I think he's a boy. I'm not sure. But I'm going ahead and doing um, Piglet's body and head. And then I'm going in and doing the arm. And I am going in and using... I think I switched to my Nails by Dev 9mm brush for this. I don't even know how I switched to this. But I think I didn't even realize that I never switched back to, from my other brush. But um, the Nails by Dev 9mm and the Amazon brush that I customized are my two favorite brushes for characters. Um, so yeah. And then now I'm going to be doing the little feet and I'm just trying to get my lines as perfect as I can. And honestly, my lines came out perfect the first time, which I was like so shocked about. I really love the way I did the proportions. I felt like I did it perfectly. And yeah, so right here, I'm just doing that. And the color I'm using right now is the triple fudge liner gel again for piglet. And then now I'm going in with a little bit of the pink that I used for the heart pillow on the other hand. I'm going with that same pink and I'm going to be uh, color coloring uh, Piglet's ears. So I'm coloring that in and then I'm also using the same color for Piglet's body I believe and Piglet's uh, nose. If you guys are liking this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. I really, really appreciate it and it really helps me see what kind of content you guys enjoy. So after I got Piglet's nose done, I'm going ahead and outlining it uh, with the triple fudge liner gel. I'm just trying to have a very, very tiny amount on my brush so that I don't mess anything up because I needed to create some super thin lines. I created a tiny bridge of Piglet's nose and then creating the tiny eyebrow and the tiny little eyeball. And then now the smile. The smile is what brings it all together. Literally um, so, so cute. I am obsessed so yeah right here I was just noticing that I got a little smudged next to the other eye that's on our left so I do end up cleaning that up a little bit later but now I'm going in and uh, doing a little more shading with that same pink that I used to shade the heart and right here you could see I'm cleaning up the eye by adding more of the piglet color and then I am going to be redoing the eye part after this is all cured. So I let it cure and then I went ahead and did the little eye again so that it doesn't look smudged. And I'm so glad I did that because it really did. It was like really bothering me that it was smudged and I could no, I could tell even though no one else would probably be able to tell. But now I'm going to be mixing together a whole bunch of different greens or no, I think this is blue. Yeah, blue. I'm going to be doing a butterfly. So... This is just like the one wing. I think we do the wings first. One wing and then the second wing right here. And I am just drawing this really cute butterfly that was on the inspo photo. Um, so I will, like I said, I will be including the inspo photos as well as the, um, yeah, the inspo photos, both inspo photos for each character at the end of this video. And then I'm doing the the body of the butterfly and then the little antennas with the triple fudge liner gel and then outlining the butterfly with triple fudge liner gel again and again trying to just make sure I have very thin lines and then the little details for the butterfly that are super important and yeah I am so obsessed like so so cute 
and then I had a little bit of green left from the tree that I painted on the other nail and I really wanted to tie in some of the green so I went ahead and added some green grass underneath Piglet and this is how the set turned out once everything was cured and I top coated Piglet and I'm, you guys are going to get an up close look right now I'm gonna show you guys each hand individually I am obsessed with how it turned out it is so freaking cute like oh my gosh one of my favorite sets I have ever seen or done. So here is the Winnie the Pooh uh, hand. And the sunlight was hitting at the perfect moment. It was so cute. And then here is the piglet hand. So, so adorable. I'm obsessed. Honestly, like, oh, so cute. Um, yeah, you guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I don't know how many times I said this set was so cute. But if you guys can't tell, I'm obsessed. So, yeah. Um, I'm so glad that I got to show you guys how I created this nail set. If you guys liked it, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!